Hey guys, today we're going to look at Studio One Pro and a problem that's kind of been going around for a little while and it has to do with this CPU spiking issue. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you here. Um, just keep an eye on my, my meter up here um, and I'm going to play this project and you're going to hear and see what happens with this CPU spiking. So if we skip around yeah they're just completely random um, and you can't use the program like that it's just unusable so here's how we're gonna fix it You see this dropout protection over here we're gonna run this to maximum and that's going to eliminate the CPU spikes. Okay, we'll talk about what it does in a second. So let me just play a little bit of this again and just show you that the spikes are gone. So no spiking. Okay, we'll skip around now. So no spiking, I can move around at will and it doesn't happen. Okay, so why? <laughs> well, here's as far as I can tell what happens. When you turn this dropout protection on, it adds latency to the system, okay? So that's why it's not spiking anymore because you're adding uh, more buffers to your audio. Okay, so if we go up here to options, uh, audio setup, here's your buffer setting here. Mine is set to 128 samples. Yours may be higher or lower depending on what uh, audio interface you use. So I'm using the uh, Apollo over Thunderbolt. I can show you that. We'll switch over here and show you. Here's where I set my buffer settings up here. Um, I can go as low as 32. But if I did that, I would really glitch the system. So we'll just leave this set to 128 samples. Go back into Studio One. So what does this mean, really? OK, so for using virtual instruments, what this is going to do is anytime you record and enable a track, Say so I record and enable this Omnisphere of a bass sound, okay? Um, it's going to turn that one track, here's the key, the one track goes into low latency mode. So it becomes playable again. And I can show you that. If I open up the mixer, this little green Z appears <clears throat> when you have the dropout protection on. Okay, I never noticed it before because if you turn this off down to minimum, it's not there. You don't even have that option. We put it back on maximum and there it appears. 
And then if you scroll down, it will show you whichever power button is green, that's the instrument that is in low latency mode. Okay, that's this guy. You're going to get a little more CPU load when you put this into record because you're in low latency for this one instrument. Okay, but what's cool is it's only for this one instrument. It's not the entire session. So if we had this turned down to minimum, all this stuff would be in basically in low latency mode, which we don't need because the rest of these are in playback. Right? So you can add your part, whatever you want to do. Let's see, in my case. Okay, we'll add a part right there. Just to show you, you know, what it's like. Now, so you may have noticed that this went a little higher when I was playing it in. And here's what you got to watch, you know, make sure that this is not enabled. So as soon as we take it out, see that drop down a little bit? Drop down quite a bit. And there you have it, you know. No CPU spikes. You get the low latency for your instruments. It's the best of both worlds. It gives you some more CPU headroom. Okay, so what about uh, recording audio in the analog inputs of your interface? Now, I can show that too. Like I said earlier, in my case, you know, it doesn't really matter what the latency is. We can look at it. Uh, the latency, you know, is pretty high. In low latency mode, it's 15.8 milliseconds, which is still quite a bit. So, again, if you're going to record through software monitoring, you know, this might not work for you. So you may have to go lower on your buffer. But you can always go low on the buffer, record whatever it is you're going to record, and then go right back to where your buffer was. But I think a lot of interfaces now have what's called direct monitoring, which you're going to monitor from your interface's control software here. Like I'm using the Apollo. If I go over here to these other inputs, uh, let's go back here. Let's arm this. Okay. So if you look, this is a Prophet 12 I have plugged into the Apollo 1 and 2s. There you have it. It shows up right there. And I don't worry about latency because I'm monitoring through here, so I don't get that added latency through Studio One. So that's why I'm not really worrying about that too much. But I just wanted to show that. So you just go ahead and, in this case, because it's MIDI, you could go ahead and record your MIDI clip, mm, like so, right here. And then all I did is just record that in after the fact. So, there it is, recorded. Okay. So there you have it. I uh, hope this helps some people out there and stay tuned. My next video is going to show my new production PC that I just built about a month ago. Um, I'm a Mac guy for the last 15 years, so um, probably talk a little bit about the uh, teething pains going back to Windows because uh, there are some. Um, and then we'll just talk about, you know, what what is a great machine for 2018 and beyond. Because I'm kind of fed up with Apple right now. See you then.